I've just started my PhD at the University of Liverpool and if I could describe the experience in one word it would be directionless. It's been so difficult to figure out what to fill my time with. A PhD is such an independent endeavour that it's so difficult to figure out what the heck to do. This is especially true in the first month of the programme. As I'm coming to the end of my first month, I thought it'd be useful to make a list of things that you can potentially do to make you feel productive in your first month of your PhD. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dina. I'm documenting my whole PhD journey from start to end, as well as providing tips and tricks along the way. Please consider subscribing and checking out my other social media pages in the description. Another really great video on this topic is by PhD in Productivity. I'd really recommend going to check that out as well. At the start of any new program or moving to any new city, a really important thing to do is to plan a new routine. Designing a solid weekly routine that works for you ultimately sets you up for success. Deciding on your working hours and prioritising well-being activities in the evenings, doing all those little habits that make you productive and clear-minded, ready to start your day. My top tip would be to have a solid morning routine ready to get you into a great mindset for the day. Experiment with different working styles to see what works best for you. Are you more efficient in the morning, in the evening, at home, in the office? There's no rules to doing a PhD, so you can kind of make your own as long as you get the work done. I'm very much a nine till five kind of gal. I like to walk into the office and completely separate my home and work environments. Get all the admin out of the way. There is a lot of admin. A lot of admin. It's taken me two weeks to get through all of the required admin for the course. Some of the admin have included setting up a new laptop, getting an office space, getting a demonstrating contract, starting demonstrating. The list is endless. I'm not going to rule you off the whole list because that's boring. Oh, well, here's a little list for you anyway. Get to know the people in your office. Ultimately, the relationship between other postdocs and other PhD students is going to be just as valuable as the relationship with your supervisor. So talk about your experience with other PhD students. You'll find that there are a lot of relatable experiences. They can also give you guidance about how they feel of their first month. So go to the pub and go and do bonding activities because it's so worth it. Make sure to also join all of the community networks that are available to you. So for example, I'm part of the NERC student network, I'm part of Peer for PhD students. There's usually loads of different groups where you can meet new people and talk about research. If you don't have academic social media pages, make them. And if you do have them, make sure that you've updated them. Pages can include Twitter, ResearchGate, Orchid ID, Google Scholar. Make sure your academic profile is nice and updated. And once you've got all the pages set up and ready to go, start connecting with other academics. Building this network is so important for your future career. I think the most obvious thing to do at the start of a PhD is to get reading around your topic. Reading is how you find research gaps in the literature and develop your research aims. And once you've got those research aims, it's a lot easier to find direction. I also recommend writing. Writing right from the start. I synthesise ideas better by writing, so I write as I read. And make sure you've got all the relevant softwares and tools downloaded and ready to go for your studies. For example, you want to make sure that you have a reference manager, a note-taking software if you do take notes online. I use Mendeley and Notion as well as OneNote. And make sure to organise all of your references in your reference manager. I currently have a folder that is the primary folder, primary PhD folder, and I have subgroups regarding different topics like eDNA, global change, data integration, and those folders are going to get more and more convoluted as you go along, obviously. <laughs> Create a budget. As a PhD student, we have limited funds. Luckily, my PhD is fully funded, so I get a stipend. However, it's not a massive amount of money, and I still have to be very careful with my spending. If you get a budget in place, it takes a little bit of pressure off. Book onto relevant conferences. I've booked onto numerous conferences that are happening throughout the year that are relevant to my field. I've actually just come back from the ACE conference, which was in Sheffield, and I did a small flash talk. 
set up journal notifications around your research area. This helps you stay up to date with the literature so that you don't miss any important papers. The journal notifications usually come through as an email that you can just kind of check through and add any papers that you think are relevant. You'll have access to a lot of development and training webinars. I'd recommend trying to get the ones that are already available out of the way with. They also help to give you a bit of direction. We have a separate Liverpool Doctoral College which provides us with workshops around general PhD skills. So we have workshops on writing, presentation skills, time management, all of which are very important for getting through your PhD efficiently. Schedule your first supervisory meetings. You might just have one supervisor. Uh, for me, I have got four. So I think there's a lot more prep that's involved when you have more supervisors because you want to make sure that the meeting is nice and structured and you present information in an efficient and clear way for everyone. Get to know your supervisors as well. Research what their fields are and spend time with them. Get to know them as a person. Another thing I'd really recommend getting into straight away is demonstrating. I find teaching a very rewarding experience and I wanted to get stuck in straight away so I actually started demonstrating in my second week. It also helps you get back into that academic mindset to go through some of the course content for the undergrads. It's a great way to get a little bit more cash and also to kind of take a mental break away from your PhD. Also make sure that you regularly update your CV. You never know when you might need it. A few more things that I didn't mention include searching for and applying to relevant grants in your field, keeping a personal journal of your progress, communicating your work, searching for relevant internships or placements, getting started with writing your PhD plan, and finally creating a plan for manuscript writing and publication. Hopefully that's given you a few ideas to get started in the first month of your PhD. I found that I've been able to fill my working days 9 to 5, 9 to 6 pretty well. And now I'm getting into the second month, I'm spending more and more time reading and more and more time developing my research aims. If you have any more ideas about what you can do in the first month of your PhD, pop them in the comments and help your fellow peers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.